Trying to get home to stream that highly anticipated series finale? Well, it may take longer with T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. You could be stuck with slower speeds during the busiest hours because you share your network with cell phone users. Why deal with that? Switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G Home Internet during peak hours. Plus, Cox offers free panoramic Wi-Fi equipment and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Why not switch? Visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Rhode Island jam like you're all in the same garage. Get Cox Internet powered by fiber with America's fastest download speeds. It's Internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla speed test intelligence data. Fixed median download speeds. USQ3 2023. Welcome to Beyond the Bridge with psychic medium and animal communicator, Samantha Jones. We're glad you're here and hope that over the next hour, Samantha and her guests will help you connect to the magic of the universe, as well as to your loved ones and pets, both here and beyond the bridge. And now, Samantha Jones. Hello, friends, and welcome to Beyond the Bridge with Samantha Jones. I am your host, Samantha Jones, and I'm so excited that you are all here today for the very first episode of this show. This show actually was a radio show, and now it's being turned into this TV show. So I'm so, so, so excited that you are here. I know that there's a lot of you that have followed me from the beginning that are here today. And and thank you so much for all your support of over this whole entire journey. You guys have been so great and so supportive and I appreciate you so much. And for those of you that are new to me, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about why I do this show and, and all of that. So we will get to that. Um, but first and foremost, I think it's important that you guys know that I am a psychic medium and animal communicator. That's my main job. That is my passion. Um, I have not always been a psychic, but I have always been an animal communicator. I learned about my abilities. Well, the first time that I remember them, I was about seven years old, um, the very first time that I communicated with an animal. And through my life, I had visions. Um, but I really think that this is a misunderstood type of profession. Um, even the abilities themselves are really, really misunderstood. So today's episode is going to be uh, first, the first part's going to be about me, a little bit about my background, why I'm here, what I do, uh, all of that. And then this, the rest of the show in its parts, we're going to talk about the psychic abilities and then the medium abilities and then the animal abilities, because they all are very different. They do different things. They come from different places. And I think before really getting into my series and into the guests that I'm going to have, I think it's important to know those things, to understand the differences and that this is very real. I know that there's skeptics out there. And so I'm talking to a lot of the skeptics today and saying, give it a chance, because I once upon a time was a skeptic too. I had visions from very young and I still didn't believe that it was true. It actually took the passing of my mom for me to really see what was going on in the universe and that there was more to what I saw than what I saw. Um, so a little bit about my background and where I've come from, because this has been a really quick journey. Like sometimes, you know, people I, I'm 46 years old. OK, and sometimes people might have been in the same career their whole life and they're getting to this point now. Right. Well, I've been kind of like fast tracked. OK, so I've worked really, really hard over the last what's it been six years, I think, since I found out about my psychic and my medium abilities. But my animal abilities, like I had mentioned, I learned about those when I was young. I communicated for the first time or what I remember was um, I had this this dachshund ripple. I was seven years old and she had gotten out. My mom and I went on vacation, if I remember correctly, and we, she, we were boarding her at a friend's house and she got out from the friend's house and, and met another dog and got pregnant. And 
So she was out in the yard with me and my friends and we were playing, playing ball and stuff. And I was worried about her. My mom made it sound like it was like this horrible thing that happened to her and she was very delicate and needed to be protected. So I sat on the ground with her and I just looked at her and I think I said it in my head because my friends were around um, that I was worried for her and I wanted her to just go lay in her doghouse while we were playing. And that's exactly what she did. She got up and she went to her doghouse and she stayed in there while we played. So I, at seven years old, you know, you really don't know what you're doing. It's like, oh, that was cool. But at the same time, maybe like that was just a coincidence that 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 didn't really happen the way I saw it. But as I got older, these things kept happening where I would just know that certain animals had maybe health issues or weren't living in the best environment. It was hard for me because I've always been a huge animal person. I have uh, a family friend that likes to tell me stories about when I was little and that she could tell me stories about animals and I would just be so intrigued with them. So I feel like a big part of my passion and why I'm here, what my purpose is, is to help the animals. So I started really noticing this as I got into um, like my early 20s and I started pet sitting. That was like the first big job that I had. Um, And my it was my husband at the time. It was his aunt that she had gone to an animal communicator and she had got these cassette tapes that ages me a little bit. Right. Um, She got these cassette tapes and she said, I think this is what you're doing and you should listen to these. And so I did. I listened to the tapes and they basically told you how to do the whole process of, um, you know, getting into the zone to do the animal communication, to talk to the animals, different ways to practice and all of that. And so after I listened to those, I started working on people's animals that like I was working for the NSPCA at the time, just doing volunteer work. And their director asked me to work on something for her, which was a dog she was having issues with. And the very first dog that I read that was hers, I told her something so specific. And that was that there was a crate at the bottom of her bed and that the dog slept in the crate and didn't like that. And she said that was right. And my mind was blown. I was like, there's no way. There's no way. She's just being nice. It's not possible that I did that on the first try. And I had those kinds of experiences till I was in my mid thirties. I had people that would like neighbors that would bring me their dogs and say, tell me what's wrong with them and and stuff like that. And, um, but I actually stopped for a while. Um, I went through a divorce and I decided that I didn't want to bring that along into my new life, that it wasn't where I wanted to be. Animal communication is really difficult when you're an animal lover because you don't want to see the negative sides of things. And I didn't realize at the time that you can actually tell the universe what you want and what you don't want. So I just stopped. I just stopped completely. And um, I started feeling it again. I went back to pet sitting because I, long story short, moved to California from Las Vegas, where I live now again, and moved there to take care of my grandmother. And so I took care of her for a long time. And then I started a pet sitting business after I realized I was going to be there for a while. So once I started working with animals again, I started feeling this like, okay, you can't just ignore this when you're working with them because you know what they need. So I had been with my husband, Danny. I had been with him for about two years, I think, when this started. And I hadn't told him about my abilities yet. And so I told him, you know, I'm I'm an animal communicator or these are my abilities. And he wasn't shocked because he had seen the way that I am with animals, but also the way that like, sometimes I just knew things, just knew things out of nowhere, right? So he actually, one of his nicknames for me at the beginning of our relationship was Dionne Warwick. Cause if you remember, she had that psychic network thing, right? So he, it was a joke. It was just, you know, he didn't really actually think that I was a psychic. I didn't really actually think I was a psychic either, but here we are. So, so I should back up a little bit in this story and tell you what really changed for me before I opened these abilities. And that was, like I mentioned, the passing of my mom. So my mom passed in 2004. She was, um, she had some health issues. She did. She had put on a lot of weight um, because she had difficulty breathing. And so when her breathing would get real bad, they put her in the hospital and then she would be there and they'd give a pumper full of steroids. And, and, um, but even worse was the, uh, the opioids. So she became, addicted to those opioids. That was a part of the problem. 
but things just got worse and worse for her and she ended up passing. It was, it was sudden, but I think at the same time, we all should have kind of seen it was coming because how was she going to get better from there? You know? So I was 26 at the time. It was my first big loss and it rocked everything about my world. It turned me upside down for a good three years. I would say I was not, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know I, I really didn't know anything. I don't even remember, honestly, between 2004 and like 2007. I don't really remember a lot. I'm just bits and pieces. Um, it took a medium for me to snap out of it. It took a very good medium that I wasn't even expecting, actually. So I had seen this lady, Hyland, a few years before this, and I hadn't tried to contact her or anything. And all of a sudden, one day out of the blue, she called me and she said, I'm back in Las Vegas if you'd like a reading. And I was like, I haven't thought about this woman in years. You know, I, I didn't associate. I don't know why. Maybe because I had never lost anybody before. I never associated like the psychic abilities and the medium abilities. I didn't think I could go to a psychic and she would be able to talk to my mother. But we'll talk about it later. But there are differences to each one. But this lady was also a medium and an animal communicator. So when I got there and we started talking, my mom came through immediately. It didn't matter what I was there for. I was there for other things. I wasn't there to talk about my mom. But she came through immediately and started saying all of these things that validated that it was her, including asking me how my birds were. This lady had no idea that I had birds. Like... It was my mind was completely blown. And I remember getting in my car and I remember just sitting there for a minute and going, I need that. And now I feel like I can kind of get on with things, you know, because after a loss, if you've ever experienced a loss, it's like, oh, my gosh, the grief can just drag on and on and on, especially with like a big loss like that, where, you know, it comes on quickly too. and your mother, there's always there's just that special bond, like my mom and I didn't have the greatest relationship as I grew up, and I'm sure I will get into that in other episodes of this show, but as an adult, we became really close, and so I felt like she was taken away from me right when we the things were getting good, right when maybe we had the type of relationship or we're building the relationship that we should. She was taken away. Um, I immediately went into this like frame of mind where I was worried that everybody was going to die. And that has been a part of the PTSD that came with my mother's passing, passing that I really still have, even though I am a psychic and medium, I still worry about the loss of people around me. Um, that trauma that sets in there is very difficult. And I didn't, I did a lot of things that did not help me. Um, for example, I listened to the saddest music I could listen to. I found every sad song that I could think of that could have slightly related to the relationship between me and my mother. And I made a playlist and I listened to that playlist every day when I went out to do my pet sits. So most of the time I would be driving around Las Vegas, doing my pet sits, crying, listening to this list. That was like the first three years. I really didn't realize until after like I got these abilities, like, Oh yeah, that was a big thing that made these things seem like they were going on and on and on, you know? So that's one of the things that I, I really love to do with these abilities is to help people to come out of that grief quicker because I did stay there for so long. So after I met with Highland, the psychic, um, I actually started trying to build like a communication with my mom, right? I noticed the things around me almost immediately after she died, that she was trying to send me signs. Like I just knew she was there. There was no way she wasn't. She died on April 13th and 13s have followed me since the day she died. And I wasn't happy about that at first because she didn't like it. She was very superstitious of the 13. So every time that I saw 13, I was like, why, why is she doing this? Why am I seeing this number? But I realize now it's because they don't want us to look at things bad like that. They don't want us to, um, feel like the 13th of every month is going to be a bad day. And that was kind of how things started for me as I noticed that the 13th of, of each month, I was you know very depressed and that went on. And what I started noticing that she did, it took a little while, but I started getting on the 13th of each month, there was something big that happened. I had a dog that passed away and um, a couple of months later, we, we went and got another puppy and she came home on the 13th of December. 
And I remember I bought a car on the 13th of November and all these things kept happening on the 13th. And I was like, okay, she's trying to tell me that this is a number that she wants to use to communicate with me. So that's what happened is we set 13. We've set songs from the beginning. Um, so like every breath you take, it was a song that I um, quoted in her eulogy. So she sends that to me and we have just established this language over the years and it's been absolutely amazing. Um, it's almost time for me to take my first break. So we will do that. Thank you guys again so much for being here. I hope that I haven't bored you too much yet. Um, I have a very interesting story and journey. There's been a lot of twists and turns. So um, I hope you'll stick around so we can talk more about it. So stay tuned, everybody. We will be right back after these messages. What if they were How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Rhode Island jam like you're all in the same garage. Get Cox Internet powered by fiber with America's fastest download speeds. It's Internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla speed test intelligence data. Fixed median download speeds. USQ3 2023. Trying to get home to stream that highly anticipated series finale? Well, it may take longer with T-Mobile 5G home internet. You could be stuck with slower speeds during the busiest hours because you share your network with cell phone users. Why deal with that? Switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours. Plus, Cox offers free panoramic Wi-Fi equipment and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Why not switch? Visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. Or a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair. What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Beyond the Bridge, friends. I am your host, Samantha Jones. Thank you so much for being here today. I have three co-hosts here with me. You can't see them right now, but just in case anybody were to pop up, my doggies are here with me. So they have to be where mom is, right? And they want to be on TV too. So there we go. So I just learned that you guys can chat with me. So the first show, you know, I'm still learning about how things work here. It's always like the most awkward, you know, like a pilot of any show is like really, really awkward. And then it gets better from there. So you'll just stick with me. It's happened with everything I've done. But I wanted to say thank you. There were a couple of comments here. Let's see, to Sharon and to Thomas and to Crystal and then my sister Amanda. Thank you guys so much. I can, I can see your comments now. I'll check them every once in a while. So I appreciate you guys so much. I have some of the best support. When I started this, I never thought that people would want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> and now I've done a podcast, a radio show, and I'm doing this. And I'm so, so, so grateful. So grateful. So thank you, everybody. 
So while we're on this medium topic, since I was talking about my mom, I'm going to stick with that and we'll talk about that a little bit. First, I want to explain a little bit about what the differences are because I didn't even know coming into this. Okay. So a medium is somebody that talks to spirits, whether it's animal or human, they talk to spirits. I think some mediums probably don't talk to animal spirits, but I do. Um, and then the psychic aspect of things is like, um, the, the energy that you give off, reading you, the past, present, future, the career, love, all of that stuff. The psychic abilities are what helps me to help people on their journey a lot of the times. And then the animal abilities is talking directly to the animals. The difference between the medium and the psychic abilities is that I feel like the medium and the animals, those two are based on telepathy. That's the language of the other side. That's the language of animals. With the psychic ability, there's a lot of intuition there. There's a lot of just listening there. So we'll get into that more later, but that's the big difference. And at the very beginning of this journey, I was taught something that um, I always think about that is that not all psychics are mediums, but all mediums are psychics. So I, I don't know how that works, but it does. So I do the, all of that. Uh, and I'm an energy healer and a spiritual counselor and an aspiring writer. So I just, I do a lot of stuff. I'm like your one-stop shop for any of your spiritual needs. So let's see what else is on my list to talk about. Oh yeah, we were talking about um, the mediumship with my mom. Okay, so after I learned this and started building this relationship with her through music and numbers, it really got exciting. It got amazing with where she started taking it. And it was like, I could guide myself through my life based on the signs that I was seeing. And that's really what's happened now too, is I'm not always the best. I don't make all the right decisions, but I have learned to listen more to things. So one of the examples is um, I did go through a divorce, like I had mentioned. And then at the beginning of my relationship with my husband, Danny, that I'm married to now, I wasn't sure, you know, it was like, you've been married for a long time. I think it was 15 years I was married, something like that, or with him for that long. It was a long time. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to get into another relationship. And so I always asked the universe for signs to show me. And at the time I was doing tours at Disneyland. And this one day I kept seeing the name Marina on, well, it was this one girl and she was wearing a name tag that said Marina, like the happy birthday. Right. And that's a very unusual name. And that's Danny's daughter's name. So it was like, that's weird. I keep running into this girl, Marina. And then there was somewhere else at Disneyland. I saw the name that day. And it was like, this is never something like it, now I get it. Now I totally understand how they communicate and how they're trying to do all these things with us. You know, it, it just at first it was like, what is going on? You know, but now I put that relationship, uh, that communication relationship together with my mom that was building for years and years to the point where when my abilities did finally open, it was not as big of a shock as it might have been if I wouldn't have um, been following these signs and known she was communicating with me through all these other ways. It was um, I mean, she comes up with the, the craziest things. Um, Here's a good story for you. My husband and I went to something called the Magic Bus. It was um, like this this 420 festival in Hollywood. And they had all these different rooms, really cool themed rooms. And there was one room that the entire thing was just covered in paper. And even the guys that were working in the room were covered in paper. And you would just take a crayon and write all over the place, right? So we went in there and we grabbed crayons and we're both writing something on the wall. And I looked down at this shelf that's next to me. And on it is a piece of paper with a unicorn drawn on it. And it says Linda and Linda's my mom's name. It was, it blew my mind for a minute and I, I chuckled and then I told Danny about it and we went and told the guy who was standing right there. We told him that's my mom's name and she passed away. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And it was just so weird. It was like, he knew because he brought, he was like, you know, come on over here to this side of the room, this side of the room. It was such a trip. And then I didn't even put it together, but what actually there was a whole other part of it too, was that my mother and I have now established colors. Her favorite color was purple and um, the colors of this unicorn, I have a picture of it. They were purple and green. I think the unicorn was in green and her name was in purple, something like that. So I just realized within the last couple of years that that unicorn was in our colors as well. So 
did some random woman named Linda go in there and draw that? Or did that guy do it? Like, that's something that I've always wondered. But this is some of the amazing things that the our, our spirits, our loved ones, our spirit guides on the other side will do for us to, you know, get us in the right direction. Let's see some of these other comments. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Lynette. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you being here. So, okay. So let's see. Going back to my medium journey. Okay. So I learned about my medium abilities, like actually finally opened them uh, by a lady that I was doing. Um, this lady called me and said that she had a cat that needed sub-Q fluids and I was doing pet sitting at the time, but I did vet tech work before. So this wasn't, this was something that I did on the side too, was um, like sub-Q fluids and injections and stuff. So she said that she was going out of town and she had this cat that needed sub-Q fluids every day and that her mom was staying at the house. So she would take care of the cat. She just didn't want to give the fluids or give the daily medication. So she asked if I would come out and do that. So a couple of days into doing that, her mom stopped me and said, has your mother or grandmother passed away? And my grandma actually passed away that year. And um, so I said, yeah, both of them have. And she just started telling me all of these messages from my mom and my grandma, things that I needed to hear that I was like, whoa, like looking back now, I realized that my mom does this, like she's like a wrecking ball comes in and like, like she just, if she wants to get through, she will get through. It's amazing. This lady didn't even believe in herself and her abilities when she was talking to me. She was like, I don't do this for work because I don't really trust myself. I don't really believe in myself. Um, but she got this so strong. And over the next couple of days, we talked more and more. And she told me that I was going to have opportunities for spiritual growth and opening up my own psychic abilities. So I think that was like September, October. And I, I thought about it, you know, I, okay, what is she talking about? Right. And so early on in 2018, I started kind of looking into, you know, okay, well, what should I do? How should I start figuring out if I have these abilities? Right. So I went into Facebook groups and just started watching a little bit what was going on. And, and um, after a little while, I started practicing in there. I just started saying what I felt about spirits, about people that had passed away. And everybody was telling me that I was correct. And I couldn't believe it for myself. And so I told my husband what happened. And he's like, okay, well, we'll, we'll test it. So he got um, a photo album and the people that he was showing me, I hadn't met before. They were people that were in his life that passed before I came along. So I didn't know anything about these people. And um, I just all of a sudden started connecting with them and communicating with them. And then my own people came in and it was this long night of talking to my mother and talking to spirits and like, whoa, I could hear everything. I don't think that my abilities have ever been as clear as they were that day. I'm thinking that maybe they showed me just how clear they'll be when I completely, you know, open them up because I definitely still have more learning to do, but it was absolutely amazing how clear it was. I was scared that night when I went to bed, I was like, I don't want to like this to go away, but this is really, really overwhelming. I remember saying that to my husband a few times, this is really overwhelming because I was hearing everything, everything. And I was like, okay, I, I've had enough for the night, you know? Uh, after that, I had to really work on building my abilities. And that was hard. I didn't understand. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have anybody that I could turn, turn to, which is a part of why I really like working with people and helping them to open their abilities because I didn't really have anybody that could help me. I just, it was like trial and error, you know? Um, it was, it was scary. But I did it and I've been working on it since then. And um, I'm so happy that I did. I'm so happy that I have this connection to the spirit world that I can share with others. And this is where not just my abilities, but what I went through also kind of comes in. Because if I wouldn't have experienced that situation with my mother, I don't know that I would be the, the medium that I am. I could be good at my job. Absolutely. But one of the things that I really feel makes me good at my job is my empathy and my ability to relate to people. So if you have suffered a loss, a sudden loss, I've been through so many different types of losses at this point. Um, I definitely have been through those types of grief and I understand, and I am very happy to help people with that because 
first of all, I don't want people to sit in their grief as long as I did. It was such a, a horribly long, painful experience. So I feel like if I can connect them to their loved ones earlier and we can start working on this earlier, that you won't stay in the grief for as long as you might have without a medium. Some of the other things that I can do with these abilities so that so that, you know, um, most of the time I get asked, and this goes with animals too, is, is my loved one okay? So, and they're all okay. They are, they're all okay. But what I do is I look into who they're with, what they're doing. Um, I can tell you how they passed away. Um, we can get unanswered, the answers to unanswered questions. Kind of like with my mom, my mom and I had a lot that was left unsaid. And I think that if I would have had to go my whole life without hearing from her, even though it wasn't in her voice necessarily, that I, I wouldn't have been able to heal the way that I did. That really, really helped me. Some of the things about these abilities, how do they work, right? What is it that I see? What is it that I, I hear and all of that? So everybody's abilities are a little bit different. And some people see things, some people hear things, some people know, some people feel. And a lot of people have one that is a specialty um, they're clairvoyant or they're clairaudient or whatever. I use them all. I don't, I don't feel like I even really use them necessarily. I feel like they just give them to me. They give me everything. It, so I even smell things a lot of times. So when I say that I see things, it's not necessarily what you might think. I don't see ghosts walking around all the time. Thank God. Um, I see things in my third eye. So I will get a vision of something and it's usually just a flash of something, whatever it is I'm talking to. So like, let's say that we want to connect to your loved one on the other side and you want to know who they're with. So I will look into this with my third eye and I will see kind of like a dream, like when you're dreaming, you know, and you, you see things that it's very similar to that. Um, or when you're having a daydream even. So, but it just comes up, there's no control over it. And I see the picture and um, I like, if I'm looking at somebody that's on the other side, then I can give you a description of what they look like. It's hard to describe people. I feel like, you know, you're tall, short, big, little, um, but there's definitely, they make it known who they are. So that's um, something that I do with my ability to see. Now I have seen spirits. Um, actually, I saw one the day before Christmas, I think it was very interesting. We just recently moved into this house and um, I don't believe in like that people haunt houses. Like um, I think all ghosts are friendly. They're just spirits. That's all. We all have them around us, you know, but um, it's when you see one, it's very trippy, but we just moved into this house and I'm a little bit interested in finding out if there was a little girl that died here because um, long story short, my husband and I saw something one day and I focused in on it and it was, the silhouette of a girl in a dress and she had these like pigtail things up in her hair. And then um, a couple of weeks later, I actually heard her say hello. And I don't normally hear things like that either. That's a whole other thing, but we got to go to break here in a minute, but real quick, I'll, I'll tell you about the hearing is that it's not like audio hearing. It's not like how you guys are hearing me right now. It's like a talk talking to yourself in your head. Right. So there's a lot of times that I will hear things only in my voice. That's most of the time, really. I would say most of it's in my own voice. Sometimes it's in theirs. Um, usually they do that to get across, like if they had an accent or something, but it's not like actually hearing like how you guys are hearing me now. So, okay. So we're going to take our next break. Man, that goes by really fast, but that's good. That's good. It goes by fast, right? So thank you guys so much again for listening. Let's go ahead and take a break and we will be right back after these messages. Trying to get home to stream that highly anticipated series finale? Well, it may take longer with T-Mobile 5G home internet. You could be stuck with slower speeds during the busiest hours because you share your network with cell phone users. Why deal with that? Switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours. Plus, Cox offers free panoramic Wi-Fi equipment and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Why not switch? Visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Rhode Island jam like you're all in the same garage. 
Get Cox Internet powered by fiber with America's fastest download speeds. It's Internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla speed test intelligence data. Fixed median download speeds. USQ3 2023. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to Beyond the Bridge, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I was just reading some of your comments during the break. And thank you so much for that. Um, my husband came in. Thanks, babe. I really appreciate your support. Love you. Um, and all of you, thank you so much for your support. I'm going to close the chat for now. Like, you guys can chat and I'll look at it. But that's where they show me when we're going to break is on another screen. And I'm afraid that I'm just going to keep talking. And then, you know, they're going to be like, you need to go break. And you didn't hear it. Okay. So we were talking about medium abilities. So I'd like to move on more to the psychic abilities because I think that this is probably the mis most misunderstood thing about any of this, right? I have visions growing up. I had visions my whole life, really, and I had no idea that I was a psychic. It's weird to say that, right? But in my head, in my mind, I thought that in order to be a psychic, you had to know everything. And I'll tell you, I do not know everything, <laughs> not even kind of. And I appreciate that because can you imagine how boring life would be if I knew everything that was going to happen every single day? So I don't. Life is suspenseful for, for me. Um, and I don't know everything about you either. I think that a lot of people worry about that. I know I did actually with that psychic Highland, I was like, is she reading my mind? And like, I don't read your mind. Um, I have a lie detector, <laughs> a built-in lie detector, which is fun. Um, it does make, uh, I had somebody ask, cause I got some questions here about, um, watching TV. Where was that? Oh, here it is. It was from Crystal. When you see a tragedy on the news, is it hard to not look into it further with your abilities? Talk about TV show predictions. Um, so yeah, TV show. Yeah, for sure. So what happens with me is that um, it kind of ruins things. I'm not going to lie. It kind of ruins things. Um, when I'm watching something like my husband and I watched this crime thing, I don't remember what it was about, but I was going with it. I was like, oh yeah, he didn't do it. This guy's, you know, and I, but I could hear it. I could hear it. No, he's guilty. He did it. He did it. I'm like, stop. I'm trying to enjoy the show, you know, but they were right. He did it. But I'm not going to, you know, tell my husband that because I don't want to ruin it for him. But it's like, can I just have a little bit of, you know, excitement here and enjoy it <laughs> or even watching like a regular TV show or, or whatever. But when it comes to like the tragedy side of things, I don't watch the news. I do not watch the news. Um, I see things on TikTok. That's where I really get my news from. Um, 
or when I'm opening my laptop and it's there on the screen and I can't miss it, but I do not watch it for these reasons. I'm a true believer in that in order for me to do my job, in order for me to stay positive and work on myself and be happy, I have to not have a lot of negativity around me. I need as much of my life to be positive as possible. And I can't think of anything more negative than the news. So I don't watch it. Um, if I see something that bothers me, yeah, I'm just like anybody else. And I, But I'll shut it out. I will shut it out. And every once in a while, something will like play through, you know, and, and I'll see it or whatever. But um, it's not what you might think. Like, for example, I, I did a live um a couple of weeks ago and there was this guy that was trying to get a message through to a loved one and what i saw was him hitting a truck um, on his motorcycle but all i saw was the two colliding i didn't see any gore i didn't see anything that would upset me like that so um i have set those boundaries i figured that out very early on in these abilities that you can set boundaries and so i've asked to not see things like the gore of it uh, especially with the animals. I just, I just can't, but, um, anyways, I think I went off on that a little bit. Um, but let's see, I want to talk more about the, the differences with psychic abilities. So the psychic abilities in me are the things that I can do, like tell you your future, you know, past, present, future. It helps me to, uh, interpret tarot because I have learned how to read tarot. Uh, I can do things with this like remote viewing. I apologize if you hear the dog snoring. I have my big 175 pound Great Dane is, is right here and he's just letting them rip. But um, yeah, so that's a little bit about um, how those things work, what I can see with those. But really like most of us have that. Most of us have that intuition in us. It's There's nothing special about me that allows me to do this all of you could. It's just about, I guess, like learning, right? Anything is about learning. You're not good at something the first time you try, typically. So with these abilities, I don't even think that that's necessarily the case because it's the other side communicating. It's just about learning to believe in yourself. I couldn't have done this show for you guys six years ago, five, four, three years ago. I had to evolve and become the psychic and the medium that I am because coming into this, I really didn't know, like I, things would happen, like my husband and I would be getting ready to go to dinner and I would hear random things like, don't go that direction. And my immediate thought was, ah, why is there an accident? Are we going to die? What's going to happen? And I have come to really find out that they're just trying to help. They're just trying to give little tips and stuff. But if I wouldn't have worked on my abilities and I wouldn't have learned those things, then I would still be trapped in that, what is this? And I think like my grandma, she had some of these abilities. And I think that that's what happened with her a lot of times was that she would know something was coming and she would just be absolutely terrified. And then if you can't tell the difference between like a message like that, like don't go this direction or anything like that, or you feel like something might be happening and you don't know how to interpret it, it just messes with you. It messes with your head. And so it is important to kind of build these and open them up. It was for me so much so that I could understand what was being said to me because all of those questions about, you know, what are they talking about and, and why shouldn't I go that direction? And, and that happened so many times. One time they said, don't take your shoes off. I was cleaning out this cabinet and I wanted to take my shoes off. And I thought, well, why? Like, I'm not expecting anybody at the door. Why shouldn't I take my shoes off? And then I broke some glass. So it that's the psychic ability. That's the intuition. That's the things that kind of come up in there. It is my, are my guides on the other side or my mom or somebody telling me those things? Well, it's very possible, but I've kind of learned to tell the difference. There's a different feeling that comes with it when it's the, the psychic impression that comes in. That could also be my higher self talking to me, but there's a difference between my higher self and me. Um, so let's see what else. I did have a couple of questions here that I wanted to answer. I asked on my Facebook today, I have a whining dog. I'm sorry. Um, so I asked some questions on my Facebook page. And one of the questions was, how do you see things psychically? How do messages come to you? And knowing, do you see things? So I kind of explained that, went into most of that. Um, I think that for the most part, 
most people do pick out that one sense, that clairvoyance, or this is Sabbath, by the way, he's very needy. Um, so he has to be with his mom, but when he doesn't get what he wants, he just sits and whines. So now he'll be pet. Um, so yeah, so it all comes in kind of differently. Um, it, it's, you know, the visuals, the hearing, all of that. Um, the one thing that trips me out the most is the smells because all of a sudden I'll just smell random things. One of the, the, I think it was the first time that that happened to me was I was doing a reading for a lady who lost her grandmother and the grandmother was trying to get through to me that they watched movies once a week, they would watch a movie and they would uh, have popcorn. And so I started smelling popcorn and this was the first time that this happened. And I was like, what is that smell? You know? Uh, and, and then I realized this maybe belongs to her. And so I mentioned it to her and she said, yeah, she explained the story. So, so there's the smells that are there too. So it's all a little bit different, but I think that we probably all had those moments where, you know, you think about somebody and the phone rings and that's the, the first one that comes to my head or, you know, you think about, oh, I, I, somebody should do this or whatever. And then they do, or, or, you know, those things you, I'm sure you've had them. I'm pretty sure that we've all have. that's your intuition. That's your psychic abilities. And we really do all have them. So the guys, I just have worked on this, um, so that I could get to where I am with it. So, okay. There was another question here. I can't remember who this was from. I didn't write it down, but thank you for your questions. Everybody, this one was when out in public, do you get a feeling, thoughts, or pictures from people who are around you? Do you ever see their loved ones around them while in public? I figured since our loved ones are with us most of the time, I wondered if maybe they'd be with us while we're out running errands. If so, can you see these souls? That's a great question. Um, I thankfully don't see a lot of spirits around. Um, I feel the energy more than that. Um, I have had times in public where things have been brought to my attention. Things, there was one time where this guy was just, he was just glowing, just absolutely glowing. And I asked Danny, I was like, is that guy glowing too? Like what's going on? And I still don't really know what it was. Um, it, I had the sense of maybe somebody had just recently passed around him or he was going to be passing. Um, but I wasn't really sure. Sometimes I just get impressions on people. For example, like we went into this restaurant once and I just felt like this girl played a sport, but this was at the very beginning of my abilities. And it was like, I was jumbling things. Uh, and so I wasn't quite sure what sport it was. And then my husband asked her and, he, and she said, yeah, I play soccer. So um, just things like that, you know, random impressions. It's another one of those kind of rules that I've set that I really don't want to be doing my job 24 seven. When I go out, when I do things, I want to be able to do things. I don't want to be followed around. If there's something important, I absolutely want them to tell me, but I really don't want to know everybody's personal business. And I don't want to, I really don't want to have to walk up to somebody in a restaurant and say, Hey, your dad that just died last week is here. And he wants to say hello because you just never know how people are going to take that. That's just a very uncomfortable situation. I think it's almost a little bit of an invasion of privacy too, but the spirits, I do what they ask, but that was one of the things that I just asked, please don't make me do that. So that does not happen to me all that much. Let's see if there, I think those were the questions that I got asked today and those were great questions. Thank you so much. Um, and so that shows a little bit about the psychic abilities. Okay. So those are, are different, right? The, um, it's not talking to spirits. It's just getting those kind of psychic impressions that, that kind of lie detector. The remote viewing is really cool. Remote viewing is that like, if you have an item that's lost and I, I don't, I see shapes more than anything. Right. So like, let's say your wallet went missing and it fell between like the couch and, and the table. I will see the two things that are the, the flat things here and it going in between. And then sometimes I'll get um, an impression of like, um, you know, a couch or whatever. I'll just hear that couch. Um, that's remote viewing, being able to see things. But a lot of times it is just the shapes that I see shapes and colors and stuff, but those are a lot of fun. I, I there's actually an app where you can um, do remote viewing on the app and, and it's a lot of fun. Um, there's a movie about it too. Something about goats. Um, 
I don't know. It's a, if you look it up about um, remote viewing, something about goats, it's a good movie and it'll explain remote viewing more. So, okay, let's go to our last break, everybody. Uh, thank you again so much for being here. This year, Kind Snacks is inviting you to leave behind the diet and wellness fads that are no longer serving you. Instead, grab a Kind Bar, a nutritious and delicious way to eat more of the real, whole, recommended foods that we're not eating enough of, like nuts and whole grains. Because all kind nut bars lead with the first ingredient, nutrient-dense whole nuts, and they're gluten-free. With great flavors everyone will love, including caramel, almond, and sea salt, and peanut butter dark chocolate. So shut out the noise, trust your taste buds, and shop Kind Bars at Amazon today. Vegas is more than just the Strip. It's busy moms taking their kids to soccer practice. It's business professionals onward to their next big meeting. It's nature lovers exploring the great outdoors. Vegas is you. Make the most of it with a new Honda from Findlay Honda Henderson. With over 500 vehicles to choose from, let us help you turn 2024 into your year of adventure. Finley Honda Henderson, located in the Valley Auto Mall and at FinleyHondaHenderson.com. Finley Honda Henderson, welcome to the difference. We will be right back after these brief messages. Stay tuned. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Welcome back to Beyond the Bridge, everyone. I am your host, Samantha Jones, and thank you so much again for being here today for my very first show on Bold Brave TV. So I have a tendency to get talking and then forget to give you my info. So I'm going to give you my info now. This is a shorter segment. I don't want to miss giving it to you. So if you would like to schedule an appointment with me or learn more about me, or I, I actually have a podcast as well with my husband called Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses, you can find that on my website, samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. I also have an Etsy where I sell more like specialized readings. These are more like pet body scan and um, fertility readings, pendulum readings, things like that, that don't require 15 minutes, 30 minutes or whatever. They're just short reading. So you can find those on my Etsy. That is beyond the bridge 11. Um, you can also find old episodes of when this was a radio show beyond the bridge on Spotify, iHeartRadio, all of those podcasts. So, but all of that you can find on my website as well. So, Okay, so in this last segment, I want to talk about my favorite thing to talk about. And I think next week it will probably be a part of the topic because animals are my favorite thing to talk about. I love animals. I've always been an animal lover. I could live on an island with just animals and be happy. <laughs> I think it's because as a kid, I spent a lot of time alone and it was the animals that kind of brought me the, the love and the joy and, and all of that. Um, but I've just always had a very, very strong connection to animals. So 
how these abilities work with the animals is you have the living pets and you have the past pets. The past pets is similar to a medium reading. So I get during most of my readings, I will get a picture from my clients. Uh, I don't need the picture, but it does help me to connect quicker to the energy and I feel deeper and I just really enjoy having the pictures so that I know who I'm working with. So I look at the picture and then it kind of clicks in and I get the impressions that they want to send, whatever it is. So with an animal that's passed away, typically they show me themselves at the rainbow bridge, which what I see is a big patch of open grass that just goes on and on and on. And at the end of it, there is um, trees. I can see just a little bit of tree and mountains behind them. And uh, this is where they hang out. And I see them with other animals there and with the people that you know, your people, your spirit team, the people that were around them, even the people that they never met. I think that's a really common misconception is that you have to know somebody in life to know them on the other side. And that's not the case. That's that's like namaste, our soul's recognition in each other. We recognize each other by souls. We don't have names on the other side. So um, it's very, very different. So with an animal that's on the other side, like let's say that um, your pet passed away and you have no idea what happened to them. I can look inside. What, what happens is I'm drawn to different parts of the body. Sometimes I even feel the issues. Like I might start to have like a little bit of a problem breathing and it's not like it comes over me and I'm like, Ugh. but it, I can feel it a little bit. And that's how I know, okay, this dog had something in their lungs, right? And I can go through the whole body and I can look at that. So I can tell you, um, what actually happened. There's also, like I said before, everybody wants to know, are they okay? So that's really the first thing that I'll answer most of the time. And I will do that by confirming things for you that I couldn't possibly know. You know just different things about their personality, what they like to do. Um, you know, I get asked a lot, what was their favorite thing to do with me? And so they'll show me that they'll show me their favorite toy. They'll show me gifts that they sent you. They'll show me things that you've done. I see a lot of times what people have done for their pets that have passed, like, um, in their memorial. I had this happen the other night where the dog showed me a teddy bear and, uh, I said, I, you know, I'm seeing this teddy bear and I was on the zoom with the guy and he was like, oh my gosh, I just put a little teddy bear ornament on his memorial tree. And I said, that's not it though. It goes deeper than that. Like that's a part of it, but it goes deeper was that um, he was, they were going to start seeing stuffed teddy bears everywhere. And he sent me a picture the next day of a stuffed teddy bear and a dog sitting on a bed at a mattress store at a mall that they used to walk this dog at all the time. So it's this year. Kind snacks is inviting you to leave behind the diet and wellness fads that are no longer serving you. Instead, grab a kind bar, a nutritious and delicious way to eat more of the real whole recommended foods that we're not eating enough of like nuts and whole grains. Because all kind nut bars lead with the first ingredient, nutrient-dense whole nuts, and they're gluten-free. With great flavors everyone will love, including caramel, almond, and sea salt, and peanut butter dark chocolate. So shut out the noise, trust your taste buds, and shop Kind Bars at Amazon today. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Things like. Got to love technology, right? Technical difficulties. Actually, earlier before the show even started, I was panicking because the computer was telling me it didn't have permission to open the camera. And I'm like, but we've done this. Um, so, you know, the universe likes to throw these little things at you to see how you're going to react. You're going to stay calm or you're going to get all crazy and upset. But um, they've definitely taught me through my spiritual awakening to stay calm. So we are back. Okay. 
So now the question is, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, the guy and, and his dog. So that was really cool. I love when they show those things, when they send little gifts and stuff, and then they let me know that they've sent those gifts. So I'm going to go back here. I need to look, see when we count down. Okay. So um, as far as with living pets, I really, really enjoy working with living pets a lot. Um, all types, not just dogs, cats. I love working with horses. I love the exotics, the snakes. Snakes are really cool, actually. Um, they have really cute personalities. I love to do that work because it allows me to um, really help people with the struggles that they might have with their animals, whether it's bringing in a new pet or um, they're having a baby or they're traveling or whatever, you know, check on them physically and all of that it really helps for the animals to live a better life. And that really is a big part of what I'm here for. I use my abilities um, purely. I do charge for my abilities. And I think that that's what we're supposed to do because it is a gift that is given to us, but I have worked on it and built it. And I really think that um, the psychics that work like this and help the universe that they should get paid for what they do. But I'll be really honest with you that even if I didn't get paid to do it, I would still do this job because I love being able to help people and I love being able to help animals. So that is today's episode of Beyond the Bridge with Samantha Jones. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I'm so looking forward to next week. It went by so quickly. Keep an eye out for me. I also have a, um, a group on Facebook called Free Pet Psychic and Medium Readings with Samantha Jones. And I go in there and do lives all the time. Also on um, on TikTok, I'm just starting to do lives on there. And that's uh, Samantha Jones Psychic Medium. You can find me on TikTok. So I hope that you guys will join again next week. And I really, really appreciate you. Samantha Jones Psychic Medium.com if you'd like to talk to me before then for next week. So thank you all so much for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful week. And I will see you next Monday. Peace and love everyone. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Beyond the Bridge. We hope you will join Samantha and next week's guest for more eye-opening ways to connect to the universe. Until next week, peace and love. This year, Kind Snacks is inviting you to leave behind the diet and wellness fads that are no longer serving you. Instead, grab a Kind Bar, a nutritious and delicious way to eat more of the real, whole, recommended foods that we're not eating enough of, like nuts and whole grains. Because all Kind Nut Bars lead with the first ingredient, nutrient-dense whole nuts, and they're gluten-free. With great flavors everyone will love, including caramel, almond, and sea salt, and peanut butter dark chocolate. So shut out the noise, trust your taste buds, and shop Kind Bars at Amazon today. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.